director of the G7 research group and co-director of the G20 research group, uh, both indeed um, headquartered uh, at the University of Toronto um, in Canada. Uh, our two research groups uh, are global networks of scholars, students, professionals, whose mission is to serve as the world's leading independent source of information and analysis on the work of the group of seven major advanced democracies and the group of 20 systemically significant states. Our the oldest uh, research groups uh, in the world are working on these two central global governance uh, institutions. Uh, we started on the G7 30 years ago when it held its annual summit uh, in 1988 uh, in Toronto uh, and in part um, at the University of Toronto itself. Uh, we started uh, on the G20 uh, 20 years ago, uh, 1999, uh, when it began uh, at the level of um, finance ministers, uh, central bank governors, uh, created at the initiative of uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers and the Canadian finance minister, um, Paul Martin, uh, and um, subsequently um, made into a, a major global governance institution uh, at the uh, leaders level uh, by a British uh, Prime Minister, um, the Right Honourable um, Gordon uh, Brown. Over the years, uh, we've developed an extensive uh, program of uh, research, teaching, uh, public uh, education. Our uh, websites on the G7 uh, and the G20, um, which started in uh, 1996, uh, have now been made um, much more accessible uh, through the work of uh, our global governance program uh, with GT uh, Media and our uh, partners. Uh, these are the ones that um, the participants of the G7 and G20 themselves rely on. Uh, so there are uh, many um, stakeholders. Uh, we've amassed uh, a very extensive, uh, loyal, um, global um, audience to uh, get the message uh, and our judgments uh, out. Uh, for each summit, uh, we do um, four key things. Uh, first, uh, our compliance reports, a public uh, report card on how each government um, actually kept the promises its leaders uh, made at the summit. Um, before, and uh, Madeline Caution a moment will say a few words about how we do that work. Uh, the second are pre summit conferences um, in partnership uh, with an institution um, in the host country. Uh, there we um, have an opportunity uh, to uh, give uh, international, uh, local um, thought leaders a heads up about what's in store uh, for them. Uh, and give them a chance to actually um, tell the leaders of themselves what they should do uh, at the summit itself. Uh, the third, of course, uh, is our um, background um, book. And we're just delighted uh, to be working with um, GT uh, Media to uh, bring it uh, to uh, the world. Much could be said about the book. Uh, probably it will be, uh, but just still uh, one thing. These are uh, the books. Uh, this is a book that the most powerful leaders of the most powerful countries in the world, the summit leaders, write for themselves personally with bespoke pieces, and perhaps as a result, uh, the ones they themselves are read um, too. Uh, so this is the book um, that counts as far as global summit governance uh, is concerned. For each summit, uh, we also uh, send a field team uh, to the summit of uh, experts, um, 30 uh, most uh, recently, to watch what's uh, really uh, happening uh, as close as uh, we can get, which is often um, very close, uh, to find out um, what's going on as the event unfolds. And at the end, uh, to uh, provide uh, an authoritative um, judgment on how successful um, the summit was. Uh, and to do that, we rely on um, the analytics, the criteria we've developed um, year-round um, back at the University of Toronto and our other uh, centers around the world. And uh, what that uh, has told us uh, over the years is that, despite all the skepticism out there, 
uh, these summits are well worth doing. Uh, they really do shape uh, the way the world um, works. Uh, they perform um, often uh, very productively, sometimes even very impressively on the many uh, global governance tasks that they undertake. And that was certainly the case at the most recent summit, um, the G7 summit, uh, hosted in Charleroi in Canada about a month uh, ago. Uh, despite all the uh, skepticism, it produced um, eight consensus uh, documents to which all of the leaders agreed. Those documents contained 315 precise, future-oriented, uh, politically binding um, commitments, many more um, than the year before uh, when uh, the G7 had its very uh, successful uh, Italian hosted uh, summit uh, in Torremina. Uh, that, of course, was the first G7 summit uh, where U.S. President Donald Trump appeared, and he was at um, Charleroi um, too. Now, um, these commitments. Um, at uh, the G7 made history uh, in some respects. Uh, they were led by those on perhaps the most compelling issue of our time, climate change, oceans, thank you David Attenborough and the BBC, uh, and um, energy uh, as well, closely followed by gender equality uh, and women's empowerment. Uh, but they did a lot for uh, inclusive uh, economic uh, growth, jobs of the future uh, in the digital age, uh, and compelling uh, peace and security concerns. Now you may have noticed that uh, a few hours after uh, leaving the summit, um, Mr. Trump um, issued a volley of um, tweets, uh, as he uh, usually does uh, every day. Uh, and one of them had a single uh, sentence that suggested that uh, he was unendorsing uh, the Charlevoix summit communique to which he had just um, agreed. About what we do know is that um, in the real world, uh, the work of um, all G7 countries goes on to implement uh, those 315 commitments at uh, Charlevoix uh, and to build on them, uh, including uh, with the next G7 uh, meeting uh, coming up in two months, it's in Halifax, uh, the ministers of um, the environment, climate change, oceans, uh, and energy. So another um, step forward uh, in G7 um, governance on the road to a uh, big uh, G20 summit uh, in uh, Buenos Aires. So um, despite the uh, skepticism uh, and the great drama sometimes of um, summits, uh, our G7 and G21s, um, NATO, or even uh, bilateral ones, uh, which we're familiar with uh, from uh, last week. Uh, these things are uh, worth looking at, uh, worth uh, following, and we're already at work um, tracking the compliance of the members uh, with those 315 uh, commitments uh, they made uh, at Charlevoix. And to tell you uh, briefly uh, how we do that, uh, Madeline Koch, uh, the Executive Director of our research group. Thank you, Merci.